Good morning. Today we are going to uh, review the qualities of ellipses and circles, and then we're going to, to spend our day graphing ellipses and writing equations for graphs of ellipses. I would like for you to pause the video, take a couple of minutes, and read through some of the characteristics of an ellipse, including general form, standard form, and what the different variables A, B, and C represent. When you are finished, uh, push play and we'll begin looking at example one. Example one, identify the center, vertices, co-vertices, and foci for each ellipse. Okay. In problem number one, we have x plus two quantity squared divided by nine plus y minus two quantity squared divided by four equal to one. When we graph an ellipse, the first thing we're going to find is the center. The center of an ellipse is very similar to finding the vertex of a parabola. The center is hk, h is the value with x, and k is the value with y. Okay, since I have x plus 2, my h value is negative 2. If I have y minus 2, my k value is 2. So the center of this ellipse is negative 2, 2. So from the origin, I'll go left 2 and up 2. Okay. Now the denominators, I have 9 and I have 4. A squared is always the largest denominator. So that means the 9 represents A squared and the 4 represents B squared. Since A squared is under the quantity with x, this will be elongated um, along the x-axis or horizontally. Now, first thing I want to find are the vertices. The vertices uh, is the a value, can be found using the a value, and a is the distance from the center to one of the vertices. So I'm going to set a squared equal to 9. Okay, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. I take the square root of 9, then a would equal 3. Since this is elongated parallel to the x-axis, I'm going to count 3 units to the right of the center, and I'm going to count 3 units to the left of the center. The two points I just filled in represents the vertices. So I have a vertex at negative 5, 2. And I have a verse, vertex at 1, 2. Okay. Covertices are found using the b value. I know that b squared is equal to 4. If I take the square root of both sides, b equals 2. b represents the distance from the center to the covertex. So from the center, I'm going to count up 2. From the center, I'm going to count down 2. So my covertices are located at negative 2, 0 and negative 2, 4. Now I can fill in the picture by connecting all four of the points, the vertices and the covertices, and I have my ellipse. It is an oval. Now, the segment that connects the two vertices is called the major axis. The major axis is always the longer of the two. The segment connecting the covertices is called the minor axis. Okay, the minor axis is going to be the shorter of the two. The last thing I need to find are the foci. Okay, a parabola had one focus, an ellipse have two foci. Now, in order to find one focus, we need to find the C value. The C value is the distance from the center to the focus. Now I know the relationship is going to be c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared. Okay. Now I know that a squared is 9 and I know b squared is 4. So c squared is equal to 9 minus 4. So c squared is equal to 5. 
So if I take the square root of both sides, C is plus or minus radical 5. Again, the vertices, I'm excuse me, the foci is found using C, and it's the distance between the center and the focus. So if C is plus or minus radical 5, I'm going to start at my center. The foci is located on the major axis. The major axis is the left and the right from the center. So in order to find those points, I'm going to take my center, which is negative 2, 2, and I'm going to take the x value, negative 2, and I have to add and subtract that radical 5 from the x value in order to find the foci. So the ordered pairs, negative 2 plus or minus radical 5, 2. Now, in order to plot those points, I need to get a calculator and actually calculate what is negative 2 plus radical 5 and what is negative 2 minus radical 5. I'm going to grab a calculator real quick. So I'm going to take a negative 2 plus the square root of 5, and I get approximately 0 0.2. Okay, so I have a focus at 0 0.2, and then my y value remains at 2. Okay, then I need to take negative 2 minus radical 5. this again. So negative 2 minus the square root of 5, and I get approximately negative 4.2. So I have another focus at negative 4.2, 2. So when I plot these, uh, I have a focus at 0 0.22. So I'm going to go right 0 0.2 up to, so approximately right here. That's one of the foci. And negative 4.2, 2. About right here, here's the other foci. Now, what, what is the point of the focus? Okay, there's two, so the foci. Well, it helps define what an ellipse is. The mathematical definition of an ellipse says a collection of points, such as the sum of the distances from two fixed points, the foci, are always constant. So what happens is I can pick any point on my ellipse. If I connect a line from each of the two foci and I add those two links together, they will be the same for every point on that ellipse. Okay, I would like for you to pause the video and try number two. When you are finished with number two, hit play and I will go through the solution. Okay, problem number two. First thing I need to find is the center. Okay, center is HK. H is the number that is in the quantity with X, so that's gonna be four. K is the value in the quantity with Y. I have a plus three, so that's gonna be negative three. So I have a center at four, negative three. Okay. A squared is always the largest denominator. So my A squared is going to be 16. My B squared is going to be 4. Because A squared is below the Y, this is going to be elongated parallel to the Y axis. This is going to be elongated parallel to the Y axis. So this time, when I find my A value, I'm going to count up and down because this graph is going to be longer, taller, instead of wider. Okay, I know that A squared is equal to 16. So if I take the square root of both sides, then A is equal to 4. Actually, plus or minus 4 if you want to be specific. 
So from my center, I'm going to count up four and I'm going to count down four. These are the endpoints of the major axis. So I have vertices at four, one and four, negative seven. In order to find the co-vertices, I need to find my B value. Okay. B squared is equal to four. Okay. Take the square root of both sides. So B is equal to plus or minus two. So from my center, I'm going to count right two and I'm going to count left two. Those two points represent the co-vertices and is located at two, negative three, and six, negative three. Okay, now I can sketch in the general shape of my ellipse. Okay. Next, I need to find the foci. In order to do so, I need to find the C value. I know that C squared is equal to A squared minus B squared. My A squared value is 16. My B squared value is four. Okay, C squared is equal to 12. Take the square root of both sides. I need the exact value of C in simplest radical form. Okay, the largest perfect square that divides into 12 is four. So the square root of 12 can be written as the square root of four times the square root of three. Square root of four is two, so I'm gonna write this as plus or minus two radical three. Now, foci are always located on the major axis, and this time the major axis is parallel to the y-axis. So when I find the ordered pairs, I'm going to take my center and add and subtract two radical three from the y value. So it would be four, and I would have negative three plus or minus two radical three. Now, when I plot these, I actually need to calculate negative three plus or minus two radical three. So I'm gonna take my calculator. I need a decimal so I can actually put those on my coordinate plane. So I'm gonna take negative three plus now, instead of going two radical three, that was also the square root of 12. So I'm gonna go the square root of 12. It's easier to type in my calculator, and it's approximately 0 0.5. So I have an ordered pair at four, 0 0.5. I also need to take negative three minus two radical three, or the square root of 12, and I have a point at approximately four, negative 6.5. I'm gonna plot these two ordered pairs on my ellipse. So if I go right four up a half, there's one foci. Okay, right four down six and a half, there's the other. And I have graphed this ellipse. Okay, moving on to problem number three. Problem number three, we are also graphing the ellipse, but this time our equation is in general form. And I need to change it to standard form by completing the square. First thing I'm going to do is group my x values together, then group my y values together on the left-hand side and move any constants to the right-hand side. So I'm, I began with the 4x squared and I'm going to move the negative 32x to be right next to that. And I have a plus y squared, plus four y. And I'm going to put the 64 on the right side by subtracting 64. And I have the following equation. Before I can complete the square, I need the leading coefficients to be one. So for my x values, I'm going to factor out the four and divide 4x squared by four, which would give me x squared. Negative 32x by four would leave me with negative 8x. And I'm gonna close my parentheses, leaving a little bit of space. 
The y squared already has a coefficient of one, so I'm going to keep that y squared plus four y, leave myself a little bit of space, and this equals negative 64. Now I'm going to complete the square. Beginning with x squared minus 8x, the b value is negative 8. So if my b value is negative 8, I'm going to take negative 8 divided by 2 quantity squared. That's negative 4 quantity squared. That's equal to 16. So I'm going to add 16. To the quantity, but I need to take 4 times 16. Okay, 4 times 16 is 64, so I'm actually adding 64 to the right hand side. Next, I have y squared plus 4y. My b value is 4, so I'm going to take 4 divided by 2 and square it. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 squared is equal to 4. So I'm going to add 4 on the left side. There's nothing to distribute, so I'm going to add 4 to the right side. Okay, next I'm going to factor. Keep my 4. Okay, negative 4 times negative 4 is a positive 16, and negative 4 plus negative 4 is a negative 8. So this becomes x minus 4 quantity squared. Okay, when I factor y squared plus 4y plus 4, I get the two quantities y plus 2 times y plus 2. That becomes y plus 2 quantity squared. Negative 64 plus 64 is 0. 0 plus 4 is 4. To finish writing the equation in standard form, I always wanted this set equal to 1. In order for this to be equal to 1, I have to divide by 4. And when we divide, we divide every quantity in the equation by 4. Okay. Now, 4 divided by 4 is 1, but I have to keep a denominator. So when I make this 1 and this 1, 1 times the quantity x minus 4 squared is the quantity x minus 4 squared and then I will have a one remaining in my denominator. I need to make sure I keep a denominator so I have both an a squared value and a b squared value. There's nothing to simplify for the second fraction, so I'm gonna keep that y plus two quantity squared divided by four, and four divided by four is one. Now I have the equation for my ellipse. So I have x minus 4 quantity squared plus y plus 2 quantity squared divided by 4 is equal to 1. My center, h, k, is located at 4, negative 2. I'm going to go right 4, down 2. My a squared value is the largest denominator at 4. Okay. I know a squared is equal to 4. Take the square root of both sides, a is plus or minus two. Since a squared is under the quantity with y, this is elongated parallel to the y-axis, so I'm gonna count up two from my center and down two from my center. This represents the vertices, and the location is at four, zero, and at four, negative four. My co-vertices can, can be found using b. I know that b squared is equal to 1. If I take the square root of both sides, then b is equal to plus or minus 1. So from the center, I'm going to count right 1, and I'm going to count left 1. I have co-vertices located at 3, negative 2, and at 5, negative 2. Last, I need to find the foci, which means I need the value for c. I know that c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared. 
My a squared value is four. My b squared value is one. So c squared is four minus one. C squared equals three. Take the square root of both sides and C is plus or minus radical three. Now the foci is always located on the major axis. This case is the vertical axis. So the, the ordered pairs for the foci, I take the center. Since the major axis is up and down, I'm going to add and subtract radical three from the Y value of the center, negative two. So I have negative two plus or minus radical three. Now to plot the foci, I actually need to plug that value into my calculator. So I'm gonna take negative two plus the square root of three. That's negative 0 0.3. So I have foci located at four negative 0 0.3. Okay, I also need to take negative 2 minus the square root of 3, and I get approximately negative 3.7. So I have a focus located at 4, negative 3.7. Now when I plot these, I'm going to go right 4, down 0.3, right 4, down negative 3.7. So they're very close to the vertices. And then I can connect the vertices and co-vertices together to create my ellipse. Okay, this video ends here. I would like for you to complete problem number four on your own and then ch check the completed notes to see how you, how you did and hopefully it can clarify any questions that you may have if you are unable to answer it. Good luck.